Troy McCanty has finally caught a break. He beat a charge, which means the score is now Troy 1, Cops 2,350. You cannot be serious! That's actually not true, it's about evens. The police had charged him with displaying gang insignia, specifically a tattoo, at a northern suburbs pub. There were a lot of tattoos of interest, but the offending ink was on his hand. This is the picture that the police were relying on to prove their case. It was taken in September in the lounge bar of the Kareen Tavern. It's pretty fuzzy. Since the police have conceded that, and in June up court on Wednesday, they said Barley's. Turns out the long arm of the law was the wrong arm of the law. Ugh. Wasn't that bad. It was. Well, it wasn't my line. It was Troy's lawyer, Paul Holmes. He came up with it, so you can blame him. Troy seems to like the Kareen. Been his local for a very long time. It was the pub the cops banned him from being in back in September. We talked about it at the time. Troy McCanty barred from going to his local pub. Pub fight? No, not even drinking. He was at the Kareen Glades Tavern to have a coffee and read the paper. He was chucked out of that pub under Section 115 of the Liquor Control Act 1988. At the time, I wrongly said it was Section 155 of that act, so we get to belatedly correct the ledger here. Section 155 allows the Commissioner of Police to issue all such orders and give all such directions to members of the police force as may, in the opinion of the Commissioner, be necessary to ensure something like this doesn't happen too often. It's pretty archaic language. got nothing on Section 115, the right one. That allows an authorised person to refuse entry, remove a person from premises or refuse to sell liquor to a person if that person is or appears to be drunk... The person is behaving in an offensive manner. The person is not dressed in conformity with the licensee's requirements for a standard of dress. The person is known to be quarrelsome or disorderly. The person is known to be or an associate of a reputed thief, prostitute or supplier of unlawful drugs. I don't know for sure, but someone in that lot has got to have done something like that. And finally, if the person is convicted of an offence involving unlawful drugs or violence that's punishable by a term of imprisonment exceeding three years. Troy ticks all those boxes. Pretty much. But associate of reputed thief or prostitute? <laughs> me, the cops are reaching on that one. The act probably mentions consorting with pirates. Go back to Treasure Island! Having said that, if someone at the Kareen complained when they saw Troy, you can argue the cops were obligated to act because of the above clauses in section 115. Or it could be an easy 10 points in Waypole's favourite game, let's give Troy the shits till he punches a cop and goes to jail. Anyway, in court on Wednesday, the insignia charge, which was brought after the cops reviewed CCTV footage from inside the pub after they chucked Troy out of the pub, was dropped and McCanty was awarded $1,060 in legal costs. Maybe he can lend the money to some of the rebels. News of McCanty's win came as the four bikers who were busted with their tats out at Rendezvous Scarborough received their penalties. The Rendezvous 4, as I like to call them, entered themselves into ink martyrdom this year when they launched the first test case of John Quigley's new tattoo laws. Hell's Angel Tyson Robinson got off completely, but rebels Jamie Ginn, Jesse Coatman and Jason Pettigrove didn't. Jamie, Jesse and Jason beat some charges but not all, so Team Triple J got fines of $1,000. Jamie, we're on Triple J. All that for 1000 bucks. It was never going to be that much, but this wasn't about the penalty. It was about the principle, as Jamie eloquently explained after he last walked out of court. I'm not taking my tattoos off. They're staying. I'm <laughs> off out of my space now. I don't know what Coatman and Pettigrove do for a crust, but Jamie's a brickie. He's probably getting, what, 250 or 3 bucks a maxi at the moment, so he needs to lay around 400 bricks to pay the fine. The bricklayer's efficiency is directly tied to how close they are to an alcohol-induced blackout. Shouldn't take him that long. Have they got the pipes on him? Government will claim it as a win. Much like their architect, the tattoo laws can occasionally be an effective tool. On this point, the stats don't lie. There have been 65 separate convictions of unlawful display of gang insignia since the laws came into being. 21 of those came from ex parte guilty pleas. The accused felt they were so banged to right they didn't even bother going to court. 41 pleaded guilty in court and three, that's Jamie, Jesse and Jason, were found guilty by a judge after pleading not guilty. The interesting bit with those figures is the 65 convictions relate to just 45 people. So we've got some people who are serial offenders. You want another one? 
Yes. I'm Ben Harvey. For more Up Late, click the subscribe button below.